we're going to remove the mirror from the telescope. And uh, that involves removing the thimble from the spindle. The thimble is this tube that the mirror rides with, and the spindle is the tube that the thimble rides on, and that'll be clear once we take it apart. So first thing is, if we hadn't already, sometimes we might already have the control box dismantled, but all we need to do here is remove the focus knob, And that lets us turn the focus knob all the way out. You can see in there the, um, the threaded focus rod goes through the threaded hole in the, um, in the back plate. And at some point, it's going to disengage, and this spring is going to want to launch the mirror across the room. So if you're doing this vertically, you'll have gravity on your side, but I'm going to just give it a little... Um, restraint here just in case and be ready for the worst. And I may need to remove the control box if I don't have enough length to turn this rod. You can also cheat by restraining that. I like that idea better. I'm just restraining the spring with my with my hands and I'm starting to lose my grip of that knob, so I'm going to maybe have to take this control box off. So we'll remove the control box. One lever's going to go clunk in there. That's as expected. And now we've got lots of rod to work with here for, for removing the mirror. And now I can hang on to the rod there. It's not loose. Of course, it didn't fly across the room. Now all I need to do is let that rod slide out and I'm going to avoid touching that nice black paint there. We've achieved separation. So here we have Thimble. The mirror is captured between this flange at the front, a little disc of Teflon to provide a little cushioning, and um, on the back, this, this plate here is actually internally threaded like a nut, and the rear end of the thimble tube is externally threaded, and then between them there is a little star-shaped washer spring, really, spring washer, that you're going to see when we take this apart. Normally, and as in this case, this is um, adhered on there because we don't want things coming loose inside the telescope. Uh, it takes a little more than nail polish remover, so I'm going to soak that in some acetone in a little pan that I make out of aluminum foil, so then that can unscrew. And for what it's worth, my understanding is that the um, focus shift that you can see in a Questar is addressed by four little dimpled or dented portions at the front of this tube and somewhere near the rear of this tube that create the nice snug fit of the thimble on the spindle here. And I've never adjusted that. Um, but I think the factory must have a little tool or fixture that just provides just the right amount of, of squeeze there so it's on snug, but it's not um, so tight that, it, that it, there's too much friction. And we can uh, delve into the details here more, but you can see that this is a, the back plate is really two parts. Of course, we have this outer ring here that, uh, that is um, connected to the control box. One very important thing is being able to know what the orientation was of the mirror and the corrector. And when you're putting this back together, the only thing you need to orient the mirror to is that little back plate and that little notch. And I'm making a note here that this uh, the casting lines on the back of the mirror have a, um, a single line here 
and a double line where the gap is aligned with the left of those lines purely by coincidence, and then three or four lines on the right and the blob at the bottom. So I'm just simply going to replicate this when the time comes, and I know that I've got the mirror just the way that it used to be. And the corrector, I've made my notes. I'm going to remind myself now. This, uh, the blue mark was uh, oriented vertically, and the only real marking on here was at, at this point. There you can see it. That's even visible internally if I ever wanted to, and that's there's a nice shot of that internal, and you can see that's 90 degrees, so that's all I'm going to have to do is put that as I'm facing the telescope when we're putting it back together. I'm going to put that at the 3 o'clock mark, and, and you can actually even rotate a corrector if the, if the ring is loose enough, and that can adjust it. I'm experimenting with whether I can be a little lazy, just use a Q-tip dipped in my gun scrubber solvent to... Uh, clean up the glue around here. Usually I will put it in an acetone soak for a for an afternoon just to make sure it gets done. And um, I can tell you on a on a Quest R7, removing it even after that requires two strap wrenches. Um, the, uh, this one sometimes requires a screwdriver to put in that notch and a little caution not to have things slip and chip and break. It turns out that a few swabs of good solvent on this particular one was enough to break the bond. <clears throat> and I it took a, a good sturdy screwdriver to get the leverage here, but this now comes off. So I'm just going to unscrew that. And this plate comes off. It doesn't care what side it's on, but I notice it's got a little ring of scratch marks from the uh, little leaf spring washer. Those spring points, um, as you can see, they extend rearward away from the mirror, so we have a, a broad ring of contact um, against the mirror. And there's a little Teflon sheet there. And then on the front side, you can see we've got the, um, the thimble comes right out. There, what, there looks like a little piece of tape wrapped around there that probably sizes it to diameter. And another, another Teflon sheet right here. And so this is ready to go off to get coated. And we can see our little ghost of a... Of a coding failure there. Um, I don't really have to do it, but it's out, so why not?